friends or enemies? How did Queen Elizabeth and Princess Diana get along? Since the news emerged that Britain's longest reigning monarch had passed away at age 96, the Queen's bond with the late Princess Diana has been in the public eye. Wanna know what really happens behind the royal scenes? Welcome to Princess Diana, the channel. Did Di and the Queen really have a frosty relationship? Were they fighting behind palace walls? Or did they develop a warm, loving bond? You're about to find out! Lady Diana Spencer was only 16 years old when Charles first noticed her. At that time, he was on and off dating Diana's sister, Sarah. Charles felt a deep pressure to organize his personal life, also because he soon would be turning 30. Diana was no outsider to the Windsor family. She and her family lived next door to the royals at Althorpe in Northampton. The Spencer family was British nobility, and the royal family was always a part of their social circle. Queen Elizabeth even was a godmother to Diana's younger brother, Charles Spencer. Diana's father was in charge of the royal horses, and Diana herself played with Prince Andrew and Prince Edward, Charles's younger brothers. Diana appeared to meet all the requirements for the Queen as a potential consort. She would right fit in as a perfect princess. An estimated TV audience of 750 million people watched their beautiful wedding in July 1981. But the fairy tale romance quickly ran into trouble. Diana understood that she and Charles had very little in common. Like the rest of the Windsor family, Charles delighted in the traditional country lifestyle and outdoor activities like polo and hunting. Diana, who was barely out of her teens, loved the city life, dancing and pop music. According to royal biographer Andrew Morton, the princess and the queen's relationship was rocky to begin with. Diana was quite simply terrified of her mother-in-law. She maintained a ceremonial etiquette, bowing for her each time they crossed paths, but otherwise kept her distance. Diana claimed that no one at Buckingham Palace, not Charles, his family or their staff, had given her much direction about what was expected of her. She said the Queen's office provided no help whatsoever at taming the press mob that had become obsessed with the Princess of Wales overnight. Palace insiders would later say that she had turned to the Queen for guidance and help, looking to her as a possible surrogate mother, not just a mother-in-law. The Queen was more understanding of Diana's difficulties, and they even developed a bond. Diana told once that she had the best mother-in-law in the world. She even called her Mama at times. As Diana and Charles's marriage crumbled, Diana decided to visit the Queen at Buckingham Palace for advice, which at first went well. Diana felt much better after these visits. It was a huge relief to speak about her problems. However, the Queen gradually started to dread the meetings more and more, referring to Diana as a nervy racehorse. The Queen was speechless in the face of Diana's constant sobbing and crying. She had no idea how to deal with this emotional young woman. Duty and service came first for the Queen. She told Diana several times to simply carry on. During one chat, the Queen suggested to Diana that the reason why their marriage had gone downhill was because Prince Charles was having such a tough time with her bulimia. In 1986, Diana spoke to the Queen about her worries concerning the other woman in her marriage, Camilla. She hoped the Queen would intervene and make things okay again, maybe even send Camilla away. But nothing really happened. The Queen wanted Diana to put her marriage issues behind her and uphold the royal family's reputation. But Diana wasn't formed like that. She was furious. Far easier to have had two wives. <laughs> As the years passed, she decided not to keep suffering in silence. And Camilla, she kept showing up. Diana then started her own affairs. The Queen and Prince Philip, who were aware of these affairs, tried to help Charles and Diana, 
advised them to work on their marriage. And more important, he tried to keep the couple's problems off the front pages. Unable to hide their unhappiness, everybody was talking about their crumbling marriage. The 1992 release of Andrew Morton's biography of Diana was like a bomb within the family. Deeply angered at the public revelations of Diana's unhappiness, the Queen and Prince Philip arranged a summit to try to put the pieces back together. But Charles and Diana were already living separate lives, and following a series of embarrassing recordings that revealed their mutual affairs, the Queen gave her consent to allow them to formally separate in late 1992. Diana's TV interview with Martin Bashir in 1995, where she claimed she had received little support from the royal family during her marriage, portraying them as uncaring and even cold. That was the final straw. Despite the Queen's reluctance to see the heir to the throne divorce, she quickly moved into action, writing to both Charles and Diana that the time had come. During the negotiations that followed, the Queen reportedly urged Charles to allow Diana to retain her status as Her Royal Highness, but Charles refused. Though she lost his title, the Queen allowed Diana to remain Diana Princess of Wales and still be regarded as a member of the royal family. Just one year after the divorce, in 1997, Diana was tragically killed in a car crash. The Queen was heavily criticized for her, at first, silent response, which many saw as uncaring in the face of the international outpouring of grief over Diana's death. However, on the eve of Diana's funeral, the Queen delivered a live speech in which she praised her former daughter-in-law. Breaking with tradition, she allowed the flag to fly at half-mast over Buckingham Palace and even bowed her head as Diana's coffin passed the gathered royals during the funeral procession. Despite many ups and downs in their relationship, the Queen showed she had always loved Diana. In her speech, she said, millions of others who never met her, but felt they knew her, will remember her. Very true words, not only about Diana, but now about the Queen herself.